is the C6 any good for astrophotography? Because most people that purchase this, including me, purchase this to use it for Hyperstar and shooting at f2. But what is it like to shoot at that 1500 millimeter focal length? I mean, I know what you're thinking, right? If you're anything like me, you want to get up close and personal on things. And since this scope that you can get for anywhere from 600 to $850 and oh my gosh, why is the variance in price so much on this thing? I got mine for 550, but anyways, how could you resist, right? You could get all these up close and personal shots with this telescope that's under a thousand dollars. I mean, why wouldn't you, right? So is it any good? Well, hopefully I can answer those questions for you here in this video. So I'm going to try, but first I think we should look at my C6 and how I put mine together. So let's begin. First things first uh, are these collimation knobs here. You can get a version of these uh, when you purchase your scope and they're just called Bob's knobs. So you're just able to use your fingers and it also, since it increases the size of the head of the screw, you get this fine movement when you're collimating and that's kind of what you want. You definitely want fine, fine, <laughs> fine movement <laughs> when you're collimating your scope. One thing I also like about these knobs is usually when you collimate a scope, you're using a screwdriver and I don't know about you, but in the dark, you know, something can happen. You can slip and scratch your corrector plate. This ensures that you don't do that because <laughs> the corrector plate is one of the most fragile parts of the scope. Also, I installed the Celestron C6 dew heater. This is absolutely necessary. You're going to want to purchase one of these around $40. Well worth the price, especially if you're shooting in the winter or in the fall, because a six inch uh, objective will definitely do over super fast in the winter and also in the fall, not to mention the spring too, but just get one. You'll, uh, you'll thank me later. All right, on this side is the little dovetail for my 50 millimeter guide scope. One thing about the C6, I was able to guide with it with a 30 millimeter guide scope, but to correct with a 30 millimeter guide scope was a little bit tough for it, especially when I was getting air due to wind or whatever, right? Uh, that 50 millimeter guide scope that I'm using, uh, SV Boney, a uh, 50 millimeter guide scope, and I'll actually put that link in the description so you can check it out if you're interested in it, uh, works perfectly. Also, I put a F63 reducer on here, and this is a reducer, but it's not a flattener. The way the mirror is designed on the C6 actually flattens it pretty good. It's not going to be like a refractor, but uh, it's fairly decent for sure. But this brings down your focal ratio from f10 to f6.3. And this is important for a few things. Number one, the visual back that comes with this C6 isn't great for mounting astro cameras too. You're also going to want a to shoot at a faster speed as well because uh, it shortens your imaging time at night. But most astrophotographers, especially beginners or intermediate astrophotographers, will be shooting with crop sensor cameras. I shoot with a 183 and also a 294. And with those cameras and this reducer, it brings my image scale to about one which is kind of in that Goldilocks zone there. Because if you're going to be using this SCT at an extended focal length, you're going to want to make sure that your photos that you get are nice, nice and sharp, right? So the image scale is right where it needs to be. It's kind of on the cusp of things, but it's, it's definitely there where you're still going to get really, really nice photographs. Although the reducer does nerf your focal length, 
So it brings it from 1500 to 945 millimeters, but that is still really, really good. Also, I was able to put the EAF on this scope as well. And if you're interested in knowing how I got the EAF on this, I actually have a video about that too. And I'll put that link in the description as well so you guys can check it out there. All right. So there's the C6 on its own, but there's also another accessory you're gonna to wanna to get. And that is a dew shield because the lip that's on here on the C6 is, I promise you is not enough to block out stray light, especially if you're shooting from an urban area. You're gonna want at least uh, this flexible dew shield here, and this will run you about $40. The only problem with this is it's not the same shape when you put it on, right? Or in the same position. Because with an SCT, because it's prone to vignetting because of its design, you're going to want to shoot flats. I mean, there are times such as narrow band where you don't have to shoot flats, really. You can kind of correct that in post. But most of the time, you're going to want to shoot flats with this SCT. Now, you could get Celestron's six inch dew shield. Now, this is the dew shield that other dew shields wish they were. Just joking, actually, I love this dew shield. Um, it's around $100, I got mine for 89. Uh, and there's a few things about it. So it's always the same shape, which I love about it also. It's got these notches that are cut out in it because you have this dovetail here, right? To mount your scope uh, to your mount, of course. And it's got a cutout specifically for it. Also, if you put another rail on top of here, it's got a cutout for that. And there's these tabs inside of that aluminum dew shield that visually lets you know that it's seated properly on the C6, which is great. And there's one other thing. It's like Celestron knew that people are going to be using Hyperstar with it. There's this kind of opening in the dew shield hood that allows you, you're supposed to actually pass these wires out to get power, you know, to your dew heater. But it's also wide enough to get USB cables coming from a astro camera that's mounted here on the front where you would put Hyperstar to your computer. So good job Celestron on designing that one. And last but not least, the thing that I like most about the dew shield is that it's got this little rubber gasket on the top. And I like it because I travel from dark sky site to dark sky site and there are times where I rest my dew shield on top of the hood of my car just because it's convenient. I don't want to put it on the ground, of course. And it makes sure that I don't scratch the hood of my vehicle. So a lot of ten attention to detail Celestron put in that little aluminum dew shield. So again, good job, Celestron. Well, that is kind of the tour of my C6. I, th I think the question is now is what are the back focus requirements for the C6, right? I mean, you're gonna need to know that. Well, let me show you what you're gonna need to uh, select or set, select, set the proper back focus on your C6. Celestron so suggests that you will need 105 millimeters of back focus from their F63 reducer. If you've never seen the F63 reducer, here it is. And here's all the parts that I use to achieve that 105 millimeters of back focus. So first off, I have my mini electronic filter wheel here. And if you're wondering how much back focus this takes up, it is 21 millimeters. I also have the Celestron 50 millimeter spacer ring here. And the model number on this is 93633A. 
There's a couple things I had to do to it to get it to work. I had to install a one millimeter spacer ring right here and also an M42 to M48 adapter here as well. And this one millimeter spacer ring only serves the purpose of me screwing it in to a certain point. So this tells me when to stop screwing it in. Also, I have a 16 and a half millimeter ring here, a 11 millimeter ring, a T2 to T2 adapter, and also my AstroCam. As you see here. So let me show you how I install all of this. So here's my filter wheel. I'm gonna turn it over like this. I'm gonna install my T2 to T2 adapter. Next, I'm gonna grab my 11 millimeter spacer ring. Then I'm gonna grab my 16 and a half millimeter spacer ring. And then I'm gonna grab my 50 millimeter Celestron ring. And you'll see here, I'm gonna put it in like this. And see how nice that fit in there with that one millimeter spacer ring? And it totally told me when to stop screwing that in. So that was, that is really nice. And then of course, I'm gonna flip this back over and I'm going to install my AstroCam, just like this. All right, and that's what your imaging train should look like. Cool, right? So let's take a look at what that looks like on the SCT. First thing I'm gonna do, of course, is remove the cap off of the reducer. And I'm going to just bolt my entire imaging train to the reducer. And it's a little fidgety sometimes. And then I'm just gonna snug it up here till it's, I mean, I, I tighten it. And the nice thing is I'm still able to turn it. It's got a nice resolution there, just in case I need to do a little bit of rotation on there. So in review, what I have is my Celestron 50 millimeter, ZWO 16.5 millimeter, 11 millimeter, T2 to T2 adapter, my filter wheel, and then also my AstroCam. All this, adds up to 105 millimeters-ish, which is the back focus that Celestron suggests for use with the reducer. So you learned a little bit about the C6 and you learned about back focus requirements, but how is it out in the field? What is it like to shoot with the C6? Well, we're gonna do that tonight. I'm going to continue my Milky Way tour and get an up close shot of the Eagle Nebula. If you saw my last video, you know I shot it with Hyperstar in wide field. But tonight I'm going to shoot the Pillars of Creation really close up with the C6 using my 180, no. 294 mm pro that's what i'm going to use tonight yeah <laughs> oh god okay let's go do this all right guys check it out got the moon up in the sky right now it's about to set tonight is a perfect night to get the pillars of creation and honestly i'm really excited because i've wanted to get this photo for a couple years now that's why i've wanted an sct but uh, the weather and then funds just haven't lined up until now. So pretty excited about it. And look at this. We were here last night 
and they locked the gate on me. But I mean, check this out. I could totally drive through here. There's just a big gap in the fence. You probably can't see this. But uh, I'm gonna be, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be good, you know what I mean? I don't wanna squat in here and uh, get the cops called on me just because I'm hanging out in here doing astrophotography. You know what I mean? Anyways, I'm going to get set up and uh, we're going to start our night. One thing about the C6 is even though it doesn't have a rotator, and I think Celestron actually designed it this way, even with this tightened down, the imaging train, as you can see here, you can still move it. It's friction fit and it's designed so that it's not gonna scratch the reducer. So see how I can turn this. It's pretty easy and it doesn't go anywhere. But for it not really having a legit rotator, this is the next best thing. So let's face it, the C6 is an SCT, so you're going to have to learn how to collimate the scope. Now, a lot of people are going to tell you that collimation is not that bad and it's really easy. For me, it was super frustrating, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I promise you this, if this is your first SCT or first time that you're going to collimate something, I promise, you, I promise you the more you do it, the better you'll get. For me, it's a year later, and I can collimate this scope in five minutes. The one thing about SETs, though, uh, that I didn't understand is once it's collimated, SETs will hold their collimation really well. Even though I break this down every night and I stick it in its bag, it holds collimation really, really well, and I just need to make minor adjustments. And that includes taking the uh, secondary out and using Hyperstar with it. Let's check out our star performance since we got a few subs back already. So here's the Eagle Nebula. This is my framing here and what I got. Uh, this is looking really, really good actually. So this is pretty typical of the C6. You, you're gonna have nice stars in the center, but as it starts going out into the edges, you'll start to see elongation happen. And I could probably get this a lot better, you know, through collimating a little bit more, but honestly, I'll just fix some of these stars if they really bother me in post. What's important to me is just the details in uh, the nebula itself. So I'm not taking pictures of stars, I'm taking picture of nebula. And uh, this is looking really good, actually. But uh, I just wanted to kind of show you what the star performance is like typically on the C6 so that you guys can make a better decision on if you want this scope or not. I was just sitting out here looking around and check out my town guys. Got the two cranes. Looks like Christmas. It's lit up like Christmas but check out all these LED street lamps that they're putting in here. That is super bright. Man, I used to live in this really dark country town. Not anymore, jeez. You know, I've been waiting to shoot the Eagle Nebula since 2021. I meant to shoot it last year, but when the time came, <laughs> the Eagle was not in the sky anymore. It was, it clouded over all summer long last year. So I lost, an entire season to clouds last year. Anyways, let's take a look at the data I shot. I already stacked it and I already edited it. Edited, is it edited? Now I didn't crop it all and we're just gonna go take a look at it as is and let's see what you think. All right, so here's the Eagle Nebula. And I'm sure you guys are interested more in what it looks like in the edges of my frame. So let's zoom in on that. 
And you'll see there, so my collimation was, you know, a little bit off, right? And this is typical of the C6. You know, I suppose if I was, or I had a backyard and I didn't have to move my C6 very often, I think my collimation would be spot on and, you know, I wouldn't have artifacts like this. But to me, this is totally acceptable because for $550, look what it's giving me, right? And this small variance at the edge of the edge of my frames just is minimal compared to you know what it's what it's given me. I mean, think about it. The comparative refractor, right? Six inch refractor. You know, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars. You know what I mean? And it doesn't even touch the focal length that I'm getting with the C6. And also F ratio, right? I mean, I'm getting with my 294, I don't know, 2200 millimeters of focal length at F63. You know, the when I think about it, the equipment that I have that shoots around F6 is my Z73 and Z61, and that's it. You know, I'm getting some serious focal length out of this and awesome fast optics as well. So well worth the price of having my stars not so perfect. And I could fix these stars too. So, I mean, it's, it's not really a big deal, right? But I don't know. But let's take a look at the Pillars of Creation. So this is the main event, right? This is what I've wanted for a while and it looks great. You know, I got a lot of resolution on it and dude, check out that dark nebula up there. I mean, it's super inky. It's totally, I mean, it's inky and black and it just, I don't know. It looks disgusting. <laughs> Actually, to tell you the truth, it looks gross. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's really dark in there. You know, I plan to expose more of it. I, I plan to shoot more on the Eagle, because I, 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 there's more sulfur in there. I, I only got a little bit of sulfur in there, but I don't know. I'm <laughs> seeing it here all dark nebulae -y is kind of like, eh, I don't know about that. Anyways, uh, there's also that little spur off to the left of the Pillars of Creation. I think that looks cool too. You can kind of see the little uh, detail that's on top of it. Kind of looks like a I don't know what it, what it looks like. Maybe a seahorse or something like that. I don't know. But it's got these little spiky things on top of it. And you can, I'm definitely resolving that, right? Well, that's the typical performance that you'll be getting out of a C6 in SCT mode. And honestly, I think it's quite a value for what it does. Now, do I think that this telescope is good for a first telescope. You know, if you're looking at it, you've never owned one before, I probably would suggest that you don't buy this as your first telescope because there's so many things to work out when it comes to having an SCT. You know, you gotta look at your image scale and what kind of cameras that you're using and then focusing with it and learning how to guide and then mounting and I mean, it is a lot, you know. I think a refractor is good for, for starting out. Because you have all that and then you put collimation on top of that. I think, I think that's just a little bit too much for someone just starting out. But for someone who has a little bit of experience in their second or third year, like myself, I think this was the perfect scope to graduate to. Well, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out in some way. Uh, we still have quite a few targets to go after this summer, so we're definitely going to do that. But if you like this video or it kind of steered you in the right direction, let me know down in the comments, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace.